Hello and welcome to another episode of Leaders of Transformation. Today we have a returning guest. Krister Ungerbach is a leadership expert, leadership language expert, a keynote speaker and a best-selling author. His insights have appeared in numerous national and international publications, including NPR, Forbes, Inc., Chief Executive and Entrepreneur. Prior to exiting the corporate life at age 42, Krister was the CEO of one of the largest family-owned software companies in the world. So he knows a lot about leadership, and we're going to talk a little bit about his experience with that. But he has just written a book, which is awesome. I've read it. I highly recommend it. It's called 22 Talk Shifts, Tools to Transform Leadership. And we're just really excited to have him here. As I said, he is a returning guest. So if you want to go back and listen to the first episode, that was episode 244. And now, of course, we're well into the uh, high 300s. And so we're just excited to hear uh, some updates as to what he's been working on because he has a passion for leadership and transformation in the area of leadership. And we're just really excited to have you here. Krista, welcome to Leaders Transformation. Thanks for having me back on the show. Uh, when I reached out, I, you know, the subtitle is Tools to Transform Leadership. And I was like, well, where, where else is a better place to talk about it than the Leaders of Transformation podcast? Right? Yeah. You know, it's funny because a lot of people will say, oh, leadership, like Leaders of Transformation is about leadership. It is about leadership, but it's about transformation in the, and that's what, so it's who's leading transformation. And so you are absolutely doing that. And of course, leadership development gets to be transformed. We could use a, a few more good leaders in this country. I'll just leave it there. But uh, just in general, you know, whether that's business-wise, whether that's political, whether that's on any scale, and even in our families, and I know you have a passion for that, even in our families, good leadership uh, is, is something that we, we really do need. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about the book. So 22 Talk Shifts awesome, awesome information material that you've got in that book. But, you know, there's a lot of leadership books out there. So what led you to write another leadership book and what makes this one different? Well, can I ask you what you think is different about it? Sure. Well, for me, I love, I love key points. Like I love when you go through and you're not just talking about like kind of lumping it all together. I like the fact that you break it down into the different uh, tools or, or um, competencies that you can actually develop. That to me, that did definitely stand out. And when you just started sharing just before we started this recording and you were sharing how you're actually going to be delivering it. So it's the material, it's the what, but yeah. it's also the how you're actually going to be delivering it. That to me is very, very different. Well, let's start with the why. You know, like whatever Simon Sinek says, we got to start yes. with the why, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, which I reveal in the end of the book, but is, uh, so my goal and the people who saw the previous episode, I was, uh, the whole journey started when I was at the YMCA, I found myself signing up for a gym membership. A woman asked me, who's your emergency contact? And I had no one. And so I, in that moment, I was like, I'm a leader with no followers. And I where did all these business books and going to write business schools. I started reading business books when I was 12. Where did they get me? A leader with no followers. And so I set aside everything business related and I said, I'm going to look, I'm going to just look outside of the world that I've been looking for 30 years to try to find the secrets that are eluding me. But my ultimate goal was for so many years, and I don't think I'm necessarily alone. I tried to use the business leadership things that I learned to kind of lead in family and lead in my personal life. And some of them worked like about creating a vision and a mission and whatever, like it was like seven habits of highly effective people was really positive impact on my life. But, but, but a lot of the things didn't. And clearly, you know, my wife left me, like my business partners were my fam my father and brothers. And like, so I, I couldn't, it didn't, you know, I, we, we, we'd have amazing results and we got a hundred million dollars in shareholder value. I mean, that, that's, and a lot of people, when I first wrote the book were like, well, why don't you tell me the tools that you use to do that? And I was like, well, but those tools, that aggressive leadership style landed me at the YMCA crying in front of a mirror <laughs> with no followers. Right. So I was like, where can we take and mix what did work in business, but with the kinder, compassionate, softer side. And so I spent four years, I spent a lot of time, you know, with new age, kind of woo-woo, psychobabble kind of people. Now I just call them people from California. And hey. uh, yeah, I love <laughs> California. I spent a lot of time there. Uh, so, and, um, and so that's where I found the, really the secrets behind this book. But my ultimate why was 
I was one of those business leaders who would read 20 business books before I'd read a single relationship or parenting book. And I wanted to meet people where they are. The research shows that when a partner usually often, well, twice as frequently, it's the wife who leaves the, a marriage uh, and, and employees kind of actually go through a similar process. By the time they come and say, I'm leaving, they're already mentally gone. So it's too late to kind of be like, oh, let's go to marriage counseling. Let me read a marriage book. Let me read this. I'm, I'm going to be a better husband or a better boss now. They're like, well, no, I already got a job offer or I'm already kind of like, I've already found an apartment that I'm, I'm, I'm moving. I, I signed a lease. <laughs> and so how can we meet people and give them tools where they're looking, which is in the business shelf? And so it's a business book, but the subtext is these tools apply as a parent and a spouse. And my, my why, which I wrote three or four years ago, is to use business as a tool to transform 10 million marriages, leaders, and lives. And, um, and, that's, and why, that's why we relate so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that is, that to me, I just want to just jump in there when you, when you said that. That's super powerful. And I know that you've probably said it several times. So to you, it's like old hat. But to, to transform the lives, the, the leadership begins at home. Leadership begins with us. Mm -hmm. And then it spills out to business. But you bring up a great point is that there, that's not usually where leaders look for yeah. development. They look in the business space. And that's exactly what I do when I with my clients. They say, I want to make more money. And saying, okay, we'll do that. Let's start here. Mm -hmm. This is so I hear that in what you're doing as well. Uh, awesome. And I, what I wanted to do is write a book that even a spouse who maybe doesn't work could actually, yeah. and, and it admittedly, just the demographics are that, you know, if the likelihood with the way the demographics are is that, you know, as pro, the majority of executives are men. I mean, I'm not being misogynistic. The reality is that's just what the data shows. Mm -hmm. So, even a, a stay at home mom who doesn't work and maybe has never worked can actually read this book. And two people can walk alongside of one another, a husband and a wife, and maybe the husband is like a leader, a successful CEO like I was, or just, a, you know, maybe a young up and coming driven, you know, um, person who wants to be around their career. They can read this book and talk about it together. And the woman, if she is not a career oriented person, can bring a new perspective to the man in her life. And then also connect a little bit on a business book. So I actually have this vision that like people for like, Christmas would be like, hey, honey, here's a leadership book. And the guy would be like, why are you giving me a leadership book? And then they start reading it together. And then they, they get to like chapter 13 or 14. And as one reader said, there's a 75 year old woman who, whose daughter gave her the book and she called her daughter and she goes, hey, I just got halfway through the book. And this is more than a business book. This is a relationship book. So it starts out very business. And then it actually comes the second half is really kind of, um, it's really both. It's leadership, what I call leadership and partnership. And for me as a CEO in a family business, like CEOs have business partners. And what I found and when I was on the journey is how does business partnership and a relationship between a boss and employee start to resemble the dynamics of a marriage? If, you, if you're a senior executive and you got the golden handcuffs and you can't leave and you've been with the same company for 10 years, you know what? That starts, the, the pain of leaving starts to resemble the pain of leaving a marriage or a long-term relationship. And so the dynamics of power and fear and uh, hiding our emotions and hiding what's really wrong, it happens in business partnerships. And so my vision was really to try to find how can we, how can we kind of shed some light on what's happening and help people to see that it's actually the same dynamics that are happening in the senior executive ranks of companies that are also happening in their bedrooms and family rooms around the world. And if we can help people to see those patterns, uh, and fortunately I had some an amazing team of editors and writers to help us kind of thread the needle to write a book that a stay at home mom who's never worked, or in this case, a retired woman who's never worked in the corporate world, who's 75 years old can say, wow, this was an amazing book. And a CEO, uh, an entrepreneurial CEO, who's kind of like, yeah, where am I getting my dump, you know, my two comma club, you know, they're gonna both connect with that book. Um, I, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the amazing team of writers and editors who kind of walked along the, on the path. Um, now, people who, your, your listeners who go and listen to the old episode, be like, where's this language of leadership book that I talked about on that episode? It never was published. <laughs> because I got some good feedback and then I found some great writing coaches and editors to actually rewrite the book. And now, now we have it. So a year, a year and a half later. 
Well, you know what, and that speaks to your passion for this project, because this isn't just a book that you got, you know, put together in a few hours and said, hey, I want to be an author. And so I'm going to put a book out. You have been spending years on this. And your first book, I will say, because I had read that one as well, or at least some of the copies that you had sent me in terms of like the drafts that you had. And I mean, that was excellent. And now you took it to a whole new level. And, yeah. and I said that that speaks to your passion about it and about this, about this topic and your commitment to writing a book that would really make a difference because you basically had to strip the whole, I mean, it's an entirely different book. Yeah. And yet at the same time, it has many of the same elements because you were talking about in the first book, the language of leadership. You're talking mm-hmm. about the language. That's why it's talk shifts. It's the... Yeah the way that we interact with each other. And to your point, and that's why I get excited about, uh, about it, because business, home life, it all interacts. If something's yeah. happening over in one area, it's happening in another area. And to be able to have a tool which is relevant to all those different areas that you can apply it to any area is yeah. really awesome. And it takes a while to kind of get the language mm-hmm. to a point where it can be understood on that level and bridge the gap between different uh, areas yeah. of our and I'm like, I'm so grateful for my editor. She was the one who said, you know, you, you, you're not going to reach as many people like a stay at home mom or somebody who's not a, doesn't want to be a leader is not going to want to read a book called the language of leadership. So pro tip, if you're ever writing a book, it's also a good thing to actually check the trademark database and see if someone else has trademarked the phrase, the language of leadership. Um, so we were just so grateful that uh, actually, and, and, and make sure you do that before you go on a bunch of podcasts and talk about it. <laughs> but so, Lesson learned. It, lesson learned. Uh, there was a very dark day in October of last year when I realized that uh, the trademark, uh, we couldn't get the title. But the, the outcome is that coming up with talk shifts, which is about communication. Like anybody has improvement with communication. And, um, and so the... The important thing is that what we did is that book that you read, we actually split it into two books and some of the deeper parts that you read uh, are actually going to be in the sequel to 22 Talk Shifts. So uh, we're already working on that. I actually have a call with my editor tomorrow to kind of, we've already been doing some planning on that. But what we're really focused on right now is kind of this concept of making reality. Um, I'm sure you probably remember in the last episode, I was still pretty, I was still a little bit angry with my dad, uh, which is kind of the, the ultimate relationship. I, I use the talk shifts to transform my relationship with now my former spouse, uh, but also with my father. And what happened in February of 2019 um, is that I read him the previous book, The Language of Leadership. And about halfway through, he said, Christer, um, I had no idea how my words hurt you. And he was 77 years old. Um, because he's uh, because he's older, his eyesight is good, and he, it's just difficult for him to read. So I actually read him the book out loud. And as you know, that book had some really painful stories that he didn't want to hear. But I didn't want to publish a book that I wasn't doing it to hurt him. I wanted to get his approval before I published the book. And uh, so I read him the book, and uh, and that was the that was the change in our relationship. I mean, we had a thirty th- for thirty years since I was twelve years old. We had kind of a toxic relationship. And, uh, and so I was like, how could we create that in the book? And as you read in the end, I kind of encourage people to read it to one another like I did. And I'm like, after the book was published, I'm like, I know no one's going to actually let me read you the book, you know, not going to happen. So well, what if we did a video book that people could watch with their kids, even kids as young as eight years old can get some of this stuff. It's so simple, fill in the blanks phrases and give our children, our spouses, our employees, our parents, our brothers and sisters, the gift of a talk shift. And so we created a video book. Uh, honestly, I think that it was actually my, uh, well, my assistant, I read her one of the chapters like nine months ago and she was said, you know, even an audio book can't show the power and the passion because I was reading this chapter and like tears were streaming down my face. And you know, she's like, I think you need, the only way you can convey this to really is, is with video. And so that was really the genesis. I found a great producer who kind of mixes in graphics. So I say that a good video book, and interestingly, I have only met one other person who's done a video book, and he used the same person. So uh, it was kind of a nice uh, coincidence. As I say, a good video book burns big ideas into your brain. 
like you get visuals come up. I mean, as you know, there's fill in the blanks phrases. So those come up on screen. So you visually recall, you know, more so than a book. Uh, obviously people who don't read books can get value. Uh, I talked to a reader just uh, last week who saw a Facebook ad and she was this amazing book. I said, have you, have you read it with your husband yet? And she said, ah, oh, he doesn't like reading books. I'm like, that's what the video book is for. People who don't like to read books, you can still experience it. So I say good video books burn big ideas into your brain, but a great video book burns them into your soul, like with emotion. And I did an interview yesterday with a man whose his story is featured in the first chapter. First chapter is called Beyond Employee Engagement, The Compassion Revolution Has Begun. His name is Kenny. And he was actually sitting in the seat where I'm sitting right now. And he was telling his story. And so like the uh, video book is gonna have the exclusive footage of that interview where he's talking about the behind the scenes of how that story impacted his life. You know, now it's been 10 years since that story. And so, Using those stories in some interesting ways is the intention is to, wow, he's, by the way, I watched the video last night. He's like, for somebody who is, I think 20, he was like in his twenties when some of the things, the realizations he had about life. And I was like, wow, that is a deep, deep individual who's had some of those kind of uh, terrifying stories and realizations at age 20. Uh, now he's almost 30. Um, but uh, so we really want to, yeah, have a deeper impact on families. And oh, by the way, you're going to get great tools that you can take to work to make, you know, <laughs> to make your career better. And we all know if we have more financial success, all other things equal. If we have more financial success, there's less financial pressures that kind of make it more difficult in our home lives. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love it, Krister. I could, I could listen to you talk about it because you're so passionate. I could listen to you all day. I have a question for you. Like, so we talk about uh, talk shifts and some of the powerful uh, examples that you've had in your own life and transformation with you and your dad and so forth. I'm curious. So there's 22 in this first book. And as I was going through what was coming up for me was, and it sounds kind of funny, but maybe that's the podcast host in me is that I was wondering which one is the one that was the most meaningful to Krister. Yeah. So I'd love to hear that. I would say the 22nd one was the most, that's the one that actually the, I wanted to make up, write a book that was good to the last drop. And like the, the final words of the book were actually the ones that still bring tears to my eyes every time I read them. Cause it was about, it's about saying, sorry. And it's about repairing broken relationships. Um, but the thing that's been most interesting about the book is that I always ask people, what was the most powerful one to you? And rarely do I get the same answer twice. So one of the things I found is that in many cases, it only takes one of these talk shifts to potentially transform a relationship. So if you walk through the video book together, like with husband or spouse or child, one of the things I encourage people to do is just at the end, make a request of your spouse. I would like you to start working on talk shifts three, seven, and nine, or whatever it is. And what you find is that very rarely does the other person actually ask you to work on the same ones. Everyone seems to walk away with a different talk shift. And sometimes all it takes is one to transform a relationship with a parent, a child, a spouse, or a boss, or a teammate. Uh, so it's not that you have to learn and master 22 different things. Um, it's probably you need to learn and master one or two things, but it's a different one or two things with each person in your life. Got it. So what you're saying is, is that if I'm you and I, let's say there's something that's going on between you and I, and so I read this book and maybe there's something that in that book, let's say, I'm sorry, right? Like you talk, well, you talk about that. So that's one that you and I, we could work on, or I could yeah. work on with you. And then there's someone else in my life and maybe there's, and what, you know, what I just thought of here with this is that it makes it relevant. And that's the nice part about it. It's like, look, with this person, this is an issue that you, you can work, you know, you can work out, reconcile, relationship, uh, shift the way that you perceive the, the realities, right? To align those realities. And then with someone else, it's this and someone else, it's that rather than memorizing. Oh, yeah. Memorizing a whole bunch of things and saying, wow, this is overwhelming. How am I going to handle? How am I going to remember all of this? 
all these techniques, which yeah. a lot of times people that teach that, right? It's techniques. And yeah. I didn't want to use that word when you asked me what, did I, what I like about the book. I didn't want to use the word techniques because they're not techniques. You they're, know, they're simpler than that, right? They're just yeah. one, one sentence. You know, there's, each chapter has two or three sentences that you just need to remember, right? You know, obviously the stories are what make it more powerful, but yeah, as you... Just even like, for example, you know, questions versus answers, Maybe just talk for a moment about, about that. Like just giving people sort of an example because they're excited. They, you know, talking yeah. about the excitement and awesomeness of the book, but giving some diving in with a couple of tips or things that people can do right now and saying, okay, yeah. Christer, I'm going to go get the book, but I, what can I use today? Yeah. So uh, here's a good example. It's probably actually one of the simplest talk shifts in the book. And I think it's in uh, talk shift 14, like the secret to listening is talking or something like that is uh, start every question that you ask with the word what or how. Now, I think talk shift 14 actually has three or four other simple nuggets like that. So it's it, even though there's 22 talk shifts, there's probably about 30 or 40 actual specific pieces of advice. They're grouped into kind of 22 groupings. And so what you'll find is that your conversation shifts when you start every question with the word what or how. And so every time you observe someone else's question, just have like the little person on your shoulder. Did that start with the word what or how? And think of how you could reframe that question. And in the book, you'll learn why that works and the psychology behind it and the neuroscience and, and what it uh, does. But the, all of the talk shifts are, are really that simple. You know, they're ask this question and you have, it's broken down and I think there's eight of them are about leadership. So they're more in a business context. Although I have plenty of stay at home moms who say, I use this stuff with kids. Like there's one about encouragement. Here's words to encourage people. Um, and, uh, and so I, as somebody who learned to lead in French and German, I really wanted to break it down into very simple phrases that, because I do see that learning talk shifts is like, it's like a learning a new language. The easy thing is it's not as hard as learning a foreign language because it's actually just learning new English words for what you're already doing. Um, and, uh, and that was partly what uh, we used some of the best practices that I learned from two of the best foreign language teachers in Europe uh, when I learned French and German as an adult. And that was kind of how we applied it. So the actual, the how we made it easier by applying these basically language linguistic teaching tools. Um, but then the other side is this video book is the intention is really that every chapter, how many times have you been, you read a book and you're like, oh, Nicole has got to read chapter six. So with this video book, uh, people who get the video book will actually get a license that you can actually share. So let's say you're watching the video book with your family and somebody's like, oh my God, my, my boss needs to know that one. Well, send them an email, www.talkshift.com 13. He can read that chapter alone and then for free if you have the video book. And then hopefully that is what kind of sparks that person to say, hey, could I enter into a talk shift with you, right? So it's not about me going off and reading a book by myself, learning these techniques and then forgetting them. Although I do think it's like a great book as a reference. Um, it's about actually entering into a talk shift with someone. And the ones that I practice with my boss or my employees are gonna be different. But what will happen is there will be something that I will learn from that practicing of the talk shifts in a work context that I will also be able to apply to be a better husband, father, mother, or wife, a guaranteed. So, and the ones that I learned with my spouse or my, even I, I use this with my, as young as eight years old was my, when I first started using these things with my son. And I learned things from him because we're practicing these things together. He's like, dad, did you mean to ask that question on a scale of one to 10? <laughs> Which is talk shift number five. Um, so, in any case, I think that it's really, it's a practical book. You can, it's, uh, I've spent a half, over a half million dollars kind of discovering and distilling these secrets into kind of an easy breezy uh, book that you can blaze through in an afternoon. And, uh, and the, I can tell you how many people I get, like, uh, you can buy the book from the website at talkshift.com. I'll give you the ebook so you can start reading it immediately. And I get emails from people that are like, you know what? I didn't even, add, I didn't even need the book because I finished it before it even arrived <laughs> because I right. like, I couldn't put it down after I opened the first page. Um, I like, uh, some woman wrote on amazon.com. She said, I saw an Instagram ad and got the book. And my my mind is like a noodle. I always kind of 
And she's like, and I opened the book on my Kindle, staring through that donut hole at the chiropractor's office. And she said on like page nine, I started like, you know, I broke, I broke down in tears. So uh, I'm just grateful to have written a book that's had that kind of impact on people. Yeah, I was just going to say you're so blessed. And um, it is, again, can I come back to the, the amount of energy that you've poured into it, passion, obviously money you've poured into this, and you are making a huge difference and impact through this book. And what I love what you just talked about, like, hey, send this to someone. You know, what's nice about that, it's not just, hey, you need to go and fix because the whole premise of the book is to, to relate and to interact. It's not like you need to go work on, you know, chapter six is for you. Cause that's what happens a lot of times in seminars, people elbow their partner, you know, that's sitting next to them and saying, did you hear what that, you know, did you hear what he say about that? And the reality is that never, that just creates more friction, more resistance uh, to the material. But when you, when you have a talk shift and you say, Hey, I'm going to send you this, I'd like to send you this chapter and I'd like us to, you know, to work on this together. Now mm -hmm. you're building relationships, you're building bridges and so forth. And it's just really, really powerful. Or next, Mr. I even, love, yes. An okay. even more powerful way to do it is to actually say, I'd have chosen that I want to work on talk shift number 13 and send it to your boss and say, Hey, can you help me? Because the thing about our language is it's so unconscious. You know, I had a situation with uh, my wife that I was saying, are you, uh, I, I saw it for 18 months. I said, do you, do you know, uh, does that make sense? And she, at one point she said, you know what? She's a very smart woman. She said, it kind of makes me wonder, do you think I'm not, do you think I'm slow? Because you say this. And so after we had this conversation, I said, in the future, every single time I say, do that make sense? Just count one, two, three, within seven days, 32. This is after I brought conscious awareness to it. And she was one, two, three, 32 times. I still said it. And so if, if I, the language leadership language expert, 32 times in a week am using a language, an unconscious language pattern, how many times are you? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, and does that make sense? Sometimes I do use that, <laughs> but it's so funny because I don't, it's, it's interesting. That's where that's perfect example. It's the interpretation. It's the meaning we give it, right? I, I love what Tony Robbins says. Communication is the response we get. And so when I say, for example, let's take that example. When I say, does that make sense? What I'm actually saying is, am I making sense yes. to you? But that's not how it's interpreted, what, like what you're saying with your wife. It's not how some people may be interpreting it. And yes. so these talk shifts can have so much impact on relationships and even the unspoken, the things like you talked yes. alluded to earlier, are the things that are not said, the things that people harbor that eventually lead them to say, I don't want to have this relationship anymore. Yeah. You have no idea what caused it. And it could be something just subtle that you didn't even mean it that way, but exactly. that it created that. So this I'm going to restate so, that because so we, you hit on exactly what I said. I said, uh, the talk shift is every time I say, do not, do, am, does that make sense? Do you say, uh, remind me that what I meant to say is, am I making sense? It wasn't about whether you're not understanding. It's about whether I'm communicating it. But if you think about that over 18 months, it took her 18 months to say, do you think I'm slow? And she had the courage to say, do you think I'm slow? How many marriages and relationships between bosses, employees that never get said? Yes. And what happens is your words, my words, were making her, causing her to think that she's not as intelligent as she is. I even believe she is. Right. Are these little subtle language patterns erode our relationships in every area of our lives. And we must have other people who can look at us from the outside in and say, hey, is that what you meant to say? And that is ultimately why doing talk shifts needs to be done with the people in our lives and not by ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Krister, thank you so much. Thank you for the wonderful book. Thank you for the, the video book, Make, taking it beyond even just a book to real integration and transformation. I love it. For our listeners, go get, a go get a copy of 22 Talk Shifts, Tools to Transform Leadership. You can go to talkshift.com. Of course, it'll all be in the show notes as well. And get a copy of this book, Start utilizing it with number one for yourself and learning how you communicate, but not just in a bubble by yourself, then take it to the next step and saying, who do I 
Uh, who can I share this with? Who can I read this alongside so that you can that you can understand even from their point of view how you actually are communicating? So so powerful. Again, Christopher, thank you so much. Thank you to our listeners for being here. And if you like this episode, please share it with your friends. I know, I know that I know people that uh, that are desiring to be great leaders that don't even know that some of the things that they're doing are probably uh, not serving them in their relationships. And so this will be a great thing for them to, to learn about into uh, the book, but also this interview and to, to learn about what we're, uh, what we're talking about here. But so if you like it, share it with a friend, give us a rating, a review on whatever your favorite podcast platform is. It helps us get a greater reach. We have listeners in over 140 countries. And imagine if we can get this message out to people all around the world so that they can start to have shifts in their conversation, shifts in their relationship, what that would mean to our world. So with that, we thank you, we appreciate you, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Leaders of Transformation real soon.